Funding for Election 2016 coverage is made possible by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to helping people turn their goals and dreams into real possibilities and changing the way America defines aging. And by the members of Prairie Public. Welcome to Prairie Public and AARP's coverage of Election 2016. I'm Matt O'Lean. This is the debate for North Dakota's Insurance Commissioner. Our guests today are Democrat Ruth Buffalo, Libertarian Nick Beta, and Republican John Gottfried. There'll be one minute opening and closing statements with debate on topics in between. Based on the draw, going first on opening statement will be John Godfrey. John? Well, thanks Matt and uh, thanks to Prairie Public and AARP for putting this on. Uh, and thanks to, to Ruth and Nick for, for coming and, and discussing these important issues. Um, the insurance commissioner's position is a, a unique and important position in North Dakota. Uh, it's unique because North Dakotans have a direct say in who serves in that role. And it's very important because its primary function is consumer protection. Uh, insurance is, a, is something that we all have, we all need, and we all use. And it's, uh, it's very often to kind of set it and forget it. Uh, but the insurance commissioner is there when you need it. Uh, so when you have an issue with your insurance company or your insurance agent, uh, it acts as a champion on your behalf and an advocate. Uh, what it all really boils down to is the insurance commissioner is the last line of defense for the North Dakota consumer. Uh, you've got really two options when, you, when you've got an issue with your insurance company or, or a claim. It's to take your insurance company to court or to go to the insurance commissioner's office. Uh, I, I guess I'd liken uh, taking your insurance company to court to a, a modern day David versus Goliath. Uh, so that's why this office okay, is so one very minute. important. Thank you, John. Uh, Ruth Buffalo, opening statement. Thank you. Um, Matt and um, everyone for being here today. Thank you Prairie Public and AARP for hosting this important debate. Um, we are in a critical junction right now here in North Dakota. Within this past year, we have seen an epidemic of drug overdose deaths across the state from Williston to Fargo. All communities have been impacted by these tragic events. Now more than ever, individuals are in need of, true, of timely and effective behavioral health services. We can no longer ignore the gaps in, within our state. I am uniquely qualified for this position because I hold several master's degrees, one in management and also an MBA from the University of Mary and, most re and uh, public health from NDSU. My top three priorities will be increasing access to behavioral health services, forming a stronger partnership with workforce safety insurance and provi providing effective community engagement throughout the state. I will work hard on your behalf, and I will be the true advocate and, ad and champion for this office. Okay, Nick, Nick Beta, one minute, go ahead. The general theme for election 2016 is people sense there's something deeply wrong, and it manifests itself in the emergence of the Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump campaigns. People are extremely frustrated with government. My whole campaign has been focused on coming back to capitalism. Everything government touches, it ruins. Health care and insurance has been destroyed by government intervention. Uh, tonight, I'm not going to engage in campaign slogans, uh, bumper sticker phrases, or flowerly language. I will, however, tonight present a stark contrast to the status quo that's represented on this stage tonight. And I look forward to having a deep, interesting conversation with the candidates and Matt and Prairie Public, and thank you. Okay, let's get to our first issue. Um, let's start with how insurance commissioners deal with Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota. Uh, during Commissioner Ham's tenure, there were several issues, lavish expenditures that resulted in the resignation of Mike Ungem, uh, later the firing of Paul Von Ebers over a botched health insurance exchange. Give me your thoughts on dealing with Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, and does North Dakota need a second large carrier? Ruth Buffalo, you start on this one. Well, with my background, I have a master's degree in management and also a master um, in business administration. Those two degrees, I feel, have well prepared me for the Office of Insurance Commissioner. I will work hard on behalf of all North Dakotans and hold all insurance companies accountable. Again, back to my platform, I, I truly believe in working on the betterment of all North Dakotans, getting back to improving the quality of life for all North Dakotans. Okay, Nick. 
uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield question. Yeah. I think that uh, there's a problem, uh, but we need to diagnose it uh, more correctly. I think we have a tendency of looking at the symptoms of, of problems and trying to figure out what we need to do with them. I think the root cause of, of uh, all these problems, uh, especially with Blue Cross, is there's no market. It's, it's basically a monopolistic marketplace, and that's because of the price and product control policies that are coming from North Dakota-controlled uh, uh, state Republicans. Uh, they talk a lot about uh, free trade, free market, and competition, but you just look around, like Matt had alluded to, uh, the problems that we're seeing with Blue Cross. They don't have to serve the consumers because they have a, a grant of monopoly from the government and so they're only uh, serving the bureaucrats and pleasing policy uh, makers when they should be uh, courting c the consumers. And so this is just a problem of a very consolidated market, which is a result from Republican control, uh, price and product controls of insurance. Okay, John. Well, I, I think to answer your question, Matt, um, do we need another large provider in the, in the state? And I think the, the answer is absolutely, and we, we've got one. Uh, you know, Stanford Health is, is engaged in the market, and we've got Medica as well, and I think you know, how to deal with Blue Cross is to uh, encourage a competitive marketplace, and, and we, we've done that over the years, and I think it's, it's taken some time to get there, uh, but we certainly have another uh, large player in that market, and it's, it's done great things in terms of holding Blue Cross accountable, making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing. Uh, and, and so the more we can encourage that type of competition, the more we can make a marketplace that, that people want to do business in North Dakota and they want to come and offer those products here in North Dakota, it, it, it ends up being better for the consumer. They have better options at lower prices. So I, I would say, yeah, we need another player, but I, it's already there. Okay. As a quick follow-up to that, what impact does the insurance commissioner really have on something like Blue Cross Blue Shield? Back to you, Ruth. I believe that the insurance commissioner does have a direct impact on uh, the regulation of Blue Cross Blue Shield. If the office is to return to its original mission, that is looking out for the consumers of North Dakota to make sure that they're being treated fairly, um, to make sure that insurance companies are being held accountable. Um, insurance companies have an important job. Um, so I definitely believe that the insurance commissioner plays a huge role in the regulation um, to hold these insurance companies accountable. Because um, again, this office is truly an advocate for the people of North Dakota, people who, whose voices are not at the table. Um, the insurance commissioner must be the voice for all North Dakotans. Okay, Nick, one more response on this? Uh, well, I, I guess, uh, you know, the insurance commissioner doesn't necessarily have any uh, discretionary powers, you know, it can't obviously legislate. Uh, it has to follow through with legislation that's already in the books. but. One of the things that I can pr provide is uh, use the bully pulpit of the office to uh, try to influence the state legislature that if we're dealing with these problems, we need to look at what's causing these problems. And like I alluded to earlier, it's that we have such a uh, centrally planned economy that revolves around uh, the whims of bureaucrats. Uh, they're taking the power away from, uh, from consumers in the marketplace. Uh, you know, you, you look at a, the wonders of a market, and what, what happens is that ultimately it's the consumer that decides. You know, uh, the businesses don't just set prices. It has to be, well, are these prices going to clear the marketplace? And that's completely up to the consumers, uh, but it's very hard when there's no choice. You know, we have like, what, two or three uh, in, uh, insurance companies, especially healthcare insurance companies. You go to a candy store, you have 50 choices for candy. Th why can't the same? Pr economic principles apply to insurance, and I think that's what I can provide. Okay, John Godfrey, last comment on this, and we'll move on to the Affordable Care Act. Well, what, what role does the insurance commissioner have on on Blue Cross and the health insurance in general? Is it's it's pretty minuscule. I mean, uh, on the broad scope of things, it's it's mostly when the in the rate control arena. Um, so where where this plays a, a, a bigger role at is, and again, is and you know, agreeing with some of what Nick said is that it's it's about setting these market prices that can be. Uh, that are competitive. Uh, you know, we look at our neighbor uh, just to the east, Minnesota. They've gone through a, a big issue where some big providers have pulled out because they weren't uh, they weren't necessarily adjusting to the market. What it really does open up, Matt, it, to, in my opinion, is a broader discussion on healthcare delivery and how that's done. And I think that that can be be done through the insurance commissioner's office, through that bully pulpit, and have that discussion uh, with the leadership in our state. 
Okay, let's move on to the Affordable Care Act. Still a hot button issued out there. Stats show now more Americans do have health insurance than before 2010 when it was passed. But I'd like to know your individual thoughts on this law and how the state continues to deal with it going forward. Nick Beta, you start first on this one. Well, I think, you know, Obamacare is, um, it's exactly what North Dakota State Republicans are doing with insurance uh, price and product control. That's all it is, but only it's on steroids. Uh, they take it to a whole new level. Uh, th th they're, they're putting into, uh, they're creating policies for consumers when consumers should be the ones that should go out into the marketplace like, hmm, I kind of like that. I'm going to have that, 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 and that. You don't get that with uh, uh, government-run uh, health care. They pick it for you. Uh, and I think that's very troubling. And I think that's why we see some of the uh, rising costs of premiums. Uh, when you, whenever you add more people into the risk pool, prices are going to go up. That's, that's just economic law. And so what happens is that uh, uh, government intervention, they're suppressing the prices uh, for some people. And where does that cost go? Well, it doesn't fall onto in, uh, insurance companies. They pass it along to uh, people that are low risk. And so there's this cross subsidization that occurs when you, when you suppress the market prices. And that's what we're seeing a lot with rising premiums. Uh, and another thing, like I said, with the control of the, the products, uh, grown men don't need uh, prenatal care, but that's one of the things with Obamacare, it's on there. And so that's just adding uh, to the expenses of uh, already expensive health care. Uh, I think Obamacare is a disaster. Uh, I think there's other ways to uh, achieve uh, health, uh, quality health care. Uh, but all we're doing is adding, uh, increasing artificial demand, which rises prices. Okay, John Godfried, reaction, response? Well, I, I think it's been, uh, as far as the, the ACA has gone, uh, in my work at the North Dakota Chamber of Commerce, I've seen how this has uh, affected small businesses across our state. I mean, it's, it's it has driven the cost of health care uh, through the roof. It's, it's become the difference between it being able to remain open and having to close your doors in a lot of instances. And so that's, that's certainly troubling. Now, to, to again, to answer your question on how, the, the Nor how North Dakota has implemented and how it's handling it, um, you know, I think I'll, I'll point directly to uh, our choice to, to stay out of the state exchange and, 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 and go into that federal exchange model. I, I'm still in the belief that I think that there, this law is still has a lot of growing pains to grow, go through, and, and I'm not yet convinced that it's not, not going to collapse under its own weight. So for the state to remain out of that state exchange program was, was a, a great decision made by our legislature. Uh, you know, you can you look at other states that have gone into that state exchange, and they are spending uh, tremendous amounts of state resources to keep these things afloat. And again, I think it points back to that federal law that was passed that it, it has really come home to impact a lot of the small businesses and consumers in our states through through the costs and how it directly how the North Dakota Insurance Commissioner can actually directly impact that. It's pretty minim, min, minuscule. I mean, that's that's a, those are federal laws, those are federal issues. But what we've done here in North Dakota is is done our very best, I believe, to keep the costs under control as much as we can. And uh, granted, a lot of these mandates and a lot of these new new changes have come out of Washington. And they're being impacted here in North Dakota, but again, I'll, I'll just point to the one thing: the the state the state run exchanges, uh, staying out of that game. I think was, uh, in hindsight, a, a very wise decision by the the state legislature. Okay, Ruth Buffalo, you might have a different view on this. Um, yes, I have to disagree with Affordable Care Act being referred to as Obamacare. Um, it is Affordable Care Act, and I do believe that our state of North Dakota missed a great opportunity in having a state exchange. I believe that the state exchange would have provided a lot of potential and opportunity for our state um, to address the needs of our communities. So what that means is that um, if the state were to have the, the exchange, we would have been able to have more of a, a say in how we catered our health care to our communities. Our communities are in need. Um, there's great need out there. It's important to also, yes, look out for our small businesses, but I believe the people of North Dakota deserve better. The Affordable Care Act has so much potential and it hasn't reached it yet. I agree that there are many growing pains, but I believe that uh, Affordable Care Act and I believe health care should not be affected by politics. It's really people over politics. Everybody deserves the right to have access to health care, and it's our responsibility um, to provide access to health care. Um, Affordable Care Act has opportunities in prevention. If we 
focus on prevention, we are going to be working further upstream, which is eventually going to save us money and dollars in the long run. Um, so I believe the Affordable Care Act is, is something good. It has growing pains, but um, we we missed some opportunities to reach its full potential. Okay, let's move on to the Dodd-Frank Consumer Protection Act, something you can comment uh, in your closing statement if you want on more on, on the ACA. What is the Dodd-Frank Consumer Protection Act? I know this is something the insurance commissioner does get involved with within the state in terms of preventing fraud. And the second part is what actual power does the commissioner have in dealing with these frauds and scams that we sometimes see? John Godfrey, do you go first this time? Well, speaking broadly on, on the on the issue of insurance fraud, um, you know, just a just to kind of again, I, I don't. I'm not sure if everybody is super in the weeds on a lot of these issues because I, I think you know I, I consider myself a little bit of a insurance nerd and, and, and I get into these things, so I, I dig into them. But just to kind of set the table a little bit is you know insurance fraud is the second most profitable crime in our country, uh, you know only behind the illegal drug trade. Um, and what that comes down to is that that affects every American family has to pay about an additional $900 a year. Uh, because of insurance fraud, because those those costs eventually obviously get passed on to the consumer. So, uh, in in terms of what the insurance commissioner does and what they what they're currently doing, and and what I'd like to see continue, because I, I think Commissioner Ham has done a, done a very fine job on, on on prosecuting fraud. Is they've moved a lot of that internally. Uh, so now they've got their their attorneys within the department are able to go out and 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 kind of, I, I guess, work a little bit more efficiently in terms of prosecuting these frauds and making sure that this it stays out of our state because or at least is contained in our state because again it, it in the, at the end of the day it costs the consumer money and I think that's you know out of the three main functions of this office are consumer protection uh, prosecuting fraud and 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 you know creating an innovative market creating a competitive marketplace so obviously it's very important and it's it's a it's a costly endeavor to the consumers in our state so it's it's something that uh, will be a high priority of mine okay Ruth Buffalo um, I believe consumer protections are important. Um, I also believe that um, if we are to have these protections in place to avoid fraud, we also need to be working further upstream um, in making sure that all North Dakotans receive health care and insurance. Um, to me, I feel that it kind of defeats the point of um, working on consumer protections for consumers what about this pool of consumers who are uninsured? Um, where is the focus on that? Where is the outreach and attention on that? Okay, Nick Beta. I think this is a good question, uh, but before we proceed with Dodd-Frank, I think it's appropriate to take a step back and reflect on what caused Dodd-Frank to happen. And uh, Dodd-Frank was like all government intervention. It was a knee-jerk reaction and without any regard to the, the seen and unseen consequences of this uh, intervention. And so what happened was the uh, financial crisis, the housing crisis, uh, and it's easy to point fingers at individual companies and stuff like that. There were companies that were involved with private back uh, mortgages, uh, uh, subprime mortgages uh, specifically, but who was it that uh, led the way in those subprime mortgages? It was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that was driven by the Federal Reserve and also by FHA, FHA policy and HUD policy for homeowner ownership. And so what happened was uh, Fannie and Freddie led the way uh, of selling these uh, mortgage-backed securities, which we all know ended up uh, uh, crashing the market. And then we come up with the Dodd-Frank Act. And what is the Dodd-Frank Act? Uh, it has, it's a piece of legislation that is supported by the Wall Street investment banks and it's killing community banks because what it's doing it's it's creating more uh, bureaucracy uh, more uh, red tape and it's creating a uh, obstacle between community lenders and uh, uh, community borrowers and so what's happening is these community banks are uh, giving out fewer and fewer loans and where our consumers are going to turn to are the banking cartels which can afford all this regulation and I think Dodd-Frank like most things that come out of DC and government is terrible. Okay finally let's uh, final question comes from our co-sponsor AARP of North Dakota what will you do as insurance commissioner to ensure that consumers get the assistance they need to obtain answers to insurance questions through the state health insurance counseling program more specifically how will you ensure that consumers will get assistance even as the deadline for Medicare re-enrollment approaches and Ruth Buffalo you go first this time. Well, Matt, um, a 
probably it was about three weeks ago we had held town hall meetings um, throughout North Dakota and I really enjoy getting out into the communities and engaging the communities and hearing from our community members. Um, so that is what I plan to do as the next insurance commissioner is get out into the communities, receive feedback from the communities, encourage feedback. Um, it's not going to be you're welcome to come to my office at any time. No, it's going to be when can I come to your community and visit with you on and hear your concerns. I believe that's a huge piece of the puzzle that's missing in the effectiveness of the insurance department today. And I believe community engagement is key in, be, in having a successful insurance department for our state. Nick Beta. Well, I think, uh, and it pains me to say this, I think that the North Dakota uh, Insurance Department actually does a pretty good job at um, helping consumers with, um, with questions uh, and pointing them in the right direction. But other than that, it, I mean, it, it's price control policy. And we see that in Venezuela, and we see these, uh, these type of policies other, uh, other places that don't have markets. Uh, I think the best thing that uh, a North Dakota Insurance Commissioner can do is uh, understand that we do not have a free market. That's number one. Okay, we need to understand that we do not have a free market. And the further we go away from the free market, the more unintended consequences are going to happen and happen and happen. So really, we need someone uh, in government, in all positions of government, that, that, I that isn't so uh, uh, blindly thinking that everything government does is sacrosanct and uh, altruism. Uh, government harms a lot of people, and, and it manipulates the markets, and we need people in there that understand economic law, respect private property, and uh, encourage uh, 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 cooperation between business and individuals. John, uh, again, the question was the state health insurance counseling program. Um, so well, your response to that. Yeah, well, I think it's important to note that this office, uh, it's not just your regulator, it's also a resource. Um, and and I, I, I'll, I'll agree a little bit with Nick on terms of I think the current office has done a, done a fairly good job of making sure you're getting out there and, and having these discussions. And and every office has a little bit of a bully pulpit. Every office has an opportunity to have these discussions uh, on, a, on a statewide level. I guess that's one area I'd like to see brought more to the forefront. Um, there's a lot of discussions we've talked about a lot of them here today. Uh, these are these a lot of these are national issues. Uh, you know, they're not they're not coming out of the state government that we've talked about today. But it's important to have an insurance commissioner who is willing to have those discussions at a statewide level to make sure people understand what's going on, where they can get help, and, and how they can help solve these problems in their own day-to-day -day lives. So that's one thing I'm excited to bring to the office is, is, again, kind of reinvigorating that bully pulpit and having some of these broader discussions on a statewide level. And I should mention, I didn't ma mention it first, uh, this is an open seat right now. Adam Hamm is, is not running for re-election, so I should make that clear. This goes fast. It's time for closing <laughs> statements already. And Nick Beta, you go first on your closing statement. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Pray public. Um, I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that we have trouble ahead uh, between a fake Obama economy, constant DC overreach, and a Republican controlled state government that spends like Democrats and has the price control policies of socialist Venezuela. I think the time is now that we make our return back to capitalism and put North Dakota first. Uh, I don't have the mega donors to fund an electoral vacation. I'm not a full-time candidate. I have to work every single day. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm losing money by being at this debate today for missing work. Uh, so that said, the only viable option that I've had for campaigning and other libertarians have, have had for campaigning has been through writing. And you can find these relevant writings at lpnorthdakota.org. And just remember, politicians thrive on sound bites. Let's elect principles not cliches. Okay, John Godfrey, one minute uh, closing statement. Well, uh, thanks, Matt, and thanks to Prairie Public again and to every, for everybody for being here. I, I think it's important to point out that I think we've all got our day jobs and we all, we're all doing this. I'm, I'm by no means a, a full-time politician. I work at the State Chamber of Commerce. Um, what it comes down to is what this job's all about, what, this, what the insurance commissioner can provide, and it's consumer protection. You need a watchdog in, in, in Bismarck who can make sure that they're advocating on your behalf. Uh, I've done I've done a lot of these things. I've I've worked at the State Chamber of Commerce. I've worked between the insurance regulators, the insurance companies, and and I represent a vast number of consumers uh, through it, business policies, through through a lot of these same discussions we're having right now. So it's a job I'm excited about. Um, you don't often hear creativity and innovation go together when you think of insurance, but 
I think we, there's a time we can do with a, a simple mindset, mindset change in the insurance department to really open up our competitive market and make it a creative and innovative uh, department that will make North Dakota a great place to do business. Thank you, John. And finally, one minute closing statement, Ruth Buffalo. Um, thank you, Matt, and thank you, fellow candidates. Thank you, Prairie Public and AARP for this important event. Um, I want to say that I believe we cannot forget about the people of North Dakota. You know, the single parents out there, the disabled veterans, the injured workers, their voices and needs need to be met. And I believe that I can bring that to the table. I will listen to, co to consumers. I will go out into the communities. I will represent all North Dakotans. I recognize the enormous potential throughout our state while acknowledging the challenges. We can seek real workable solutions to build a stronger in North Dakota, but we can't do it alone. We have to work across the table. We have to engage our community and we can't forget about working upstream. And working upstream means taking a preventative approach um, in health, really focusing on improving the quality of life for all North Dakotans. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth, and thanks to all of you for being here, uh, contending for the North Dakota Insurance Commissioner position. And uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Matt O'Lean, and thank you for watching Prairie Public and AARP's continuing coverage of Election 2016. Remember, Election Day is November 8th. So long. Funding for election 2016 coverage is made possible by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to helping people turn their goals and dreams into real possibilities and changing the way America defines aging. And by the members of Prairie Public.